Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, my name is Dave Eisenstatter. This is the Valley Advocate Podcast, um, which uh, Valley Advocate does in collaboration with Amherst Media. I'm here with Gina Beavers, That's our me. arts and culture editor here at The Advocate. Thank you, Dave. And we're here with Dara Herman Sireline. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great to be here. Is an artist and environmentalist, anti-plastic. Yes. Completely anti-plastic. And we're going to talk to you about uh, your journey to being anti-plastic. But uh, first of all, talk to us about your art. Yeah, you've got to show up. Where is it? Right now I have a show up at the Ho Hosmer Gallery at the Forbes Library, great. Yeah. which I'm very excited about. It's a great with show. Pam Acosta. Mm -hmm. um, and we're having an opening on, actually it's a closing, yeah. on June 27th because <laughs> the show is only up till the 29th. Okay. Um, and it's a great event, actually, because they're showing Casablanca that night. And they oh. turned it kind of into an event, come dressed How in the fun. 1940s, you know, oh. Rick style nice. bar. So it's become kind of an event there. So we're yeah. very excited. I've never about actually it. even seen Casablanca. So <laughs> I we like, just I talked kinda, about yeah, that right, the other right, day, as a matter right. of fact. Great yeah. chance. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. It really, yeah. I, I kind of am looking forward to it, yeah. but yeah. So, <laughs> right. So, but you, <laughs> uh, I didn't, I'm not a big fan. So, but you went to Pratt, right? I went to Pratt Institute. Okay, um, so um, your art is just a part of who you are. I've been doing art from the very beginning. I've always used art sort of as, um, you know, a poet writes poetry and a singer belts out a song, I paint yeah. to mm. get my message out. And your message is? Well, right now, my message, my focus is the environment, but I definitely paint about a lot of important issues. Yeah, you paint about um, equality. Being equality, a woman gender, in, yeah. role models, yeah. um, you know, motherhood. Yeah. You know, it's really kind of hits me at the time. Right. So, but the environment is right now the it's, biggest. I've been painting about the environment probably for the last 10 years. Yeah, what is it that sparked you about the um, environment? You know, I, used, I drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And water bottles were a big part of my life. And I really just got sick of the whole recycling, you know, process. And I wanted to find out really where do these bottles are going. And the more research I did, the more I found out that, you know, our recycling is not really working. There's mm. maybe 9% of everything that we use that's a plastic item is recycled. That's not a big number. Wow. And um, yeah, it's it's horrific, actually, and it's destroying our oceans. And I woke up and I went, I'm done with this. I'm done with plastic. I think my son was probably maybe two. He's 16 now. Oh, he's used to it. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I try to be very good about it. He wants to go to Starbucks. You know, you have to be kind of find your way through this plastic yeah. nightmare right. without losing your mind. You know, because we're surrounded in the world, and the world is, everything is a plastic item. So we have to kind of go through this world trying to make choices, and my choice was to eliminate plastic from my life completely. Oh, man. That's, like, so inspirational. And also, yeah. and, uh, and also, you're bringing up this, I guess, fear that I always just tuck back into the back of my mind whenever I'm recycling something that, like... Are they actually recycling this? Right. I, like, and and you're saying that it's you like nine nine percent yeah. is a that horrific or low, less. low number or, or, or less. less. Okay, so you know, <laughs> so the reality is is that the recycling is really not working, which means that we have to be more aggressive with uh, the planet by eliminating plastic from our lives on a daily basis. Right. You brought a an amazing visual yes. visual I aid. Did. I can you can sure you show it to us? Yes, absolutely. Crinkle, um, crinkle, 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 crinkle. Here is, um, and I put it in a clear plastic bag so you can get an idea of what these items are. Oh wow! <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's everything that you can imagine. Takeout items is a huge problem. Right. When you go into a restaurant, you know, before you even get your glass of water, this, the plastic straw is in your glass. Right. If you want it there or not. Um, you know, it just it's it's just out of control. We've gotten so used to the convenience of a plastic world, right. you know, yeah. um, that it's we're we're kind of living for convenience and sacrificing, you know, the earth, the ocean. So when the graduate know. in the graduate when uh, Benjamin oh. 
<laughs> oh, what was that Father's one? Father's friend says plastics. Plastics, yeah. that's the future. It's the future. Yeah. But it's yeah. also like a horrific yeah, future. Yeah, the devastation. I mean, you know, for me now, plastic is just for pe- people that are sick. That's how I look at wow. it. There are people who who they really need a straw oh, yes, because right. they can't right, right, suck right, right. down the liquid. Right. Well, that's what those straws should be for, emergency. Mm. I mean, I'm not, you know, saying that uh, everyone should stop using plastic, but I think that they really got to start trying. Yeah, so this is the this is the result of stopping trying. So tell us exactly. how long, how, um, I've how been, many years yeah, worth this, of this? This is a collection that has been with me. I moved from Belchertown um, four years ago, and I took that bag with me to California for a year and collected. I didn't know if the plastic was going to change on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe, it's you know. Funnier. Yeah, they got better <laughs> plastic. I don't know. So I just started to collect there. And actually, I had a big bag of just balloons yeah. mm. that are, you know, people use them one time. Congratulations, you know. You have a painting with that. Yeah. With the yes, I do. With a balloon right. in his mouth because and then the Mylar balloon. Yeah. There's so them. many things There's, that are just one use only. Right. That right. Are, one yeah. time use items um, for convenience. We just, we don't realize it when you're taking a bottle of water from the store that you're using it for... How long does you have your bottle of water for until it gets warm and you don't want it anymore? Yeah. Right. I don't know, maybe an hour, the longest. But that bottle is living with us for 200 years. Ugh. And, and it's not a very now good our, trade. Yeah, it's not, not a, a good, good trade, trade, and our recycling is only 9%. Yeah. So we have to start asking ourselves, where is that plastic going? And um, you know, people don't want to think about that. So with my art, back mm-hmm. to my art, is I've spent a lot of time researching plastic, the industry, how the oil business is involved in it, how all the business McDonald's and everybody is has their hands really deep in this plastic right. industry. Because it's an industry. It started in Absolutely. back way back then. Plastics came out. Everybody was yeah. so happy. It was convenient. Yeah. You wrap everything up and nobody thought about another the, b- petroleum you know, byproduct. Or, yeah. Which is right. a whole it's an other, oil and that's right. no whole nother right. podcast to talk exactly. about. Yeah. So before I forget, this is right. how many years? This is about seven years in the end. That's seven years. And, this, hours and hours we're in just my like life. looking at this. So it's like yeah. so <laughs> we've, mean, got, we've got the plastic piece. forks. Plastic spoons. I, know, I see like a Hagen Dazs thing in there. Tabs on, uh, you know, all your oh, little, pull, yeah, you know, the, the, the extra safety. Yep. Yeah, the safety. That, Do you know, remember you, some 1982? There was like three cases of. Um, Tylenol. Th- it was the Tylenol it was case, Tylenol. right? That yep. it started. Everything had to be wrapped, had to be in wrapped and sealed. Oh. Before that, it was twenty it years was, ago, right? It was crazy. Before so, that, you just opened something up. Sure did. After Tylenol, it was. Yeah. And you know, sixteen I, layers of safety. There hasn't been one thing since then, yeah. but. And there's you know, some. I don't su- think it's the plastic that's saving no, you. You can certainly it. get in the bottle if you. There's like surprising it, you know. things in here too, like this cork. The cork. Like, like I think I don't think of well, corks as that's being right. plastic, but well, like, but but this one is. It's a great business. They stopped making it out of out of cork, cork. and now yeah. they make it out of plastic. Yeah, convenient. You can stick it back in. Uh, you know, right. we're like I said, we're living our lives. Um, we're giving up the precious world for our very simple conveniences. And, you know, I can go on about this topic, really, and all the negative things, but I wanted to come here with a more positive outlook. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't think that this, I, that we're stuck with this. I think we can make changes, and that's why I make paintings like that. Yeah. I could come here and I could show you horrific pictures of turtles with straws uh-huh. bleeding from the, their nose. Mm. You can, I could bring you pictures of whales with stomach cut up, and their stomachs are filled with, like, 80 tons of plastic. Right? So what I decided to do is if I drew paintings about them or I made art about it that were a little more creative and a kind of little off, that that might strike like an interest in the viewer. Yeah. Nobody wants to look at turtles with that look. Yeah. Of, That's horrible, isn't it? And nobody wants to look at whales. Nobody wants to look at the albatross birds. That was my painting that oh, you the saw. Yep. Yeah, they're very famous. They're, they have like yeah. this wingspan, yep. and they live they live so far away from human civilization, yet they're being affected by mm. our plastic right. consumption. And really, what this is all about is it's consumption. We just keep consuming. Do we really need so much? And that's why what, what I want people to ask themselves. Yeah. What is it for you to give up that plastic bottle and take a tin bottle with you instead? You're saving money, first of all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You really mm-hmm. are. 
you're eliminating the plastic from the planet. And you're also yeah. whatever you PCBs or whatever you're taking into your body yeah, let's, through the plastic. We haven't even talked about what kind of chemicals that right. are coming off that. I mean, I gave my son baby bottles from plastic that I boiled in water. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, I ah. that's it's mm -hmm. if you would think about that and you think about the chemicals that are coming right. off the plastic, no sane mother would do that. Right. Mm. There's not one mother in the world that would do that. You just wouldn't. You would don't no, want those not. toxins right. going into you your bloodstream. Blast. So there's probably a lot of that going on too. Right. So what I say to people is just just try one thing. Stop accepting plastic bags from your grocery store. Mm -hmm. Take your metal bottle with you. If you bought a plastic bottle and you're attached to it, fill it up a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Though, I, of course, I really would rather you not do that. Right. But if you are you have to have your plastic, then you know. You take your own silverware. There's so many alternatives. There's bamboo. We have a lot of amazing uh, restaurants in this area that are already turning over. They're already using alternative materials in a plant-based. You can't even tell the difference that there are plastic cups. Tart Bakery, for instance, mm. everything in there is plant-based. You oh, walk out with something, yeah. you think it's a plastic cup, yeah. but it's not. It's plant-based. You turn it upside down, it says plant-based. Wow. So there's a. We live in a rich area where people are really conscientious. They want that change. You know, it's just. I think it's lack of education. People just don't know. They believe in the recycle system, and I believe in the recycle system too. You just have to keep doing it no matter what that nine percent counts no matter what right but again like i said try to eliminate this is so informative too this, this uh, your own collection of your own garbage I, I mean i think that if everybody did it this yeah. way i mean i know that if i right. did it this way i would be horrified, horrified. At, at the trail i was leaving behind you, you know what it is we are we are we're humans we're just we're habitual we're just yeah. used to doing what we do and we yeah. love you know path and of least resistance we yeah. don't right and we are comfortable yeah. We're so easily comfortable, so it's kind of comfortable to go to a restaurant and come out with a takeout plastic a bag. Dog, yeah. You go home, you don't think about it, you throw it in the trash, right? Yeah. You're not seeing what's happening on the other side of the world. You're not seeing what's happening underneath the ocean surfaces, mm. you know? And so again, back to my art, I don't show you those pictures, because I'm hoping that my art is going to open up a conversation. Yeah. Well, you brought, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you brought bring, some, yes. yeah. Let's see. Yeah, maybe we could make some room. With, you don't even, it's not even, I mean, it's like, you know, I think you've is, done a great job. It's It looks like a lot just like sitting here filling up the table. But or, when you, know, you think six years? or seven years, it's well, really. You know what, like I said, I was collecting balloons Yeah. Um, on the beach in California because you couldn't believe the one time used balloons. Congratulations, Feliz Navidad. You know, uh -huh. it's a boy, it's a girl. Right. You know, mm -hmm. McDonald's. Mm -hmm. We got to get McDonald's responsible for using plastics. And meat. You know, and oh, right, Leah, we haven't gotten to the meat yet. But we we have to start getting these companies to be responsible because they're in control. If you th if you get a plant based story and you don't know the difference, you're still walking out with the McDonald's. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like a lot of the businesses need to start taking responsibility if they want us to keep going to there. Yeah. And there's a lot of people with campaigns and they're out there pushing for that stuff. Um, this painting is not in the show, but I had a, a poster of it, so I thought I'd bring it in. Yeah. And this um, is, this you want to hold that up, I am guess? Am I holding that yeah. right for you? Yeah, nice. Whoops, Oops. sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. And this is you can of, hold it because it's not, okay, it's just a copy. Kind of reminiscent of the whale. It is. It's the whale Which and the right? albatross birds. Yeah. There was a picture going around that showed the inside stomach of the albatross birds and it was filled with, it looked like this. Oh. This is what their stomachs look like. Yeah. I mean, if you go and you look up the whales, this is what they're, they're opening them up and this is what they're finding. That's uh -huh. so tragic. It's, it's tragic and it could be avoided. So what were you saying in so this painting? So in this painting, what I did was I thought if I drew a human that maybe that can open up the conversation where people are saying, oh, that's horrific. That would be awful if that happened to a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was feeding my baby plastics, well, this is what it would look like. Well, mm -hmm. that's what's happening to our wildlife. 
and that's what's happening to our rivers and our waterways and the plastic is entering in every way it can right it's entering when we wash our clothes you know because we have micropedes and, right yes and our yeah. shampoos yeah and we have plastic in which our are, materials which are those, those little tiny tiny um balls that mm -hmm. supposedly make your hair somewhat cleaner or something yeah, they but then mind. they go yeah, right down they go the, right down the, down the drain right and then they go right into your ocean uh -huh. yeah and let's not forget that you're also eating it right mm. so you you know it's like a ch terrible chain reaction yeah yeah so the simple changes are is, you know, don't accept the plastic bags, you know, grab a cloth bag. I brought you guys a present. Yay. Okay. I'd, I'd love, love to show you. Yeah. So uh, we brought oh, you. I read about these. Oh, goody. Okay. So. What do we got? We got the, because I'm very proud to be a Northampton person now. I've yes. been living here for three <laughs> or four years. All right. And because it's such a progressive place, our mayor, our, our mayor passed the plastic bag ban. Mm -hmm. And we are officially a New England plastic bag town. Mm. And um, this is for you. Thank one you. For you. And I one for swag. you. I love swag. And, and that's, the, that's the Northampton exactly. City Hall. Exactly. Cool. Make a great t-shirt. It's... <laughs> I, this blue is psychedelic. Oh, that's really I'm like, fun. it's like yeah, popping I, you it you out of my eyes. Your this is cool. I love it. It's vibrating, right? Yeah. So, how will people get these? Um, these you can contact me. Okay. At my website or by free. email if you'd like a bag. Um, I wanted to thank. We wanted to thank. It was my husband and I. We wanted to. He made the bags. Actually, he's mm -hmm. also nice an artist. Work. His name is Peter Zierlein, and he um, made these bags. And we were so excited about the plastic bag ban that we went to the town meeting and we were like, "Thank you, Mayor!" And we gave bags out That's terrific. to be supportive of that. You That's know, terrific. we're hoping that Northampton is going to set the trend for all the surrounding towns yeah. because it's such a progressive. Place. But even, I mean, even with this bag ban, there's definitely resistance still. We we actually we wrote kind of of a funny story about a guy who wanted to challenge the mayor to a race where he would be carrying plastic bags and the mayor oh, would be carrying paper bags right. and they would see like how, how I actually that, remember, he how, had crutches or well yes right yeah because right. because he he was like that the paper bags would rip or something but it's but it's like but beyond that, it's like there's all these things that you're talking about mm -hmm. uh, about all like the, the alternatives the, yeah. that you can use that right. you're not, you know. But again, right. we're just creatures of a habit. Right. So if the bags are made available, then the people will take them. Yeah. If the bags are not available, right. the people will find alternative yeah. ways. I think whoever has this bag would win the race. I, That's what I think. If you have a cloth sure. bag, you know, and I roll this I'm up. I'm excited I have, about this. You, I'm, good. I'm so I glad. Let me see what else I have on my good yeah, bag. Yeah. Wow. Bag yeah. I see an advocate I, um, down there. That's good. <laughs> yeah, the advocate too. Great. What a great paper. Well, we don't print it on. We don't print it on plastic. <laughs> well, that's an added plus. Yeah. Not yet. Um, I brought you, <laughs> and we will I make Gina. sure that does not happen, Gina. <laughs> I brought you. I knew you were oh. gonna. I brought also postcards. It's oh, the same wonderful. image. Well, actually, I don't know if you saw oh, this. I remember this was in the show. That was that is in the show, oh, um, and on the back of it is an alternatives list. To plastic. Oh, terrific! Um, and that, it's oh, that's really nice. Easy. Use just glass bottles, not plastic bottles. Use straws made of metal or glass, not plastic. And then there's a whole list of these. That's terrific. And there's also some resources on there, like the Plastic um, Coalition, and um, there's Beth Terry's book, uh, "To Live a Plastic-Free Life," mm -hmm. which is a great resource. I think I brought that too, just to show everybody oh, because. You see my little tags in here. I'm still uh -huh. learning. Yeah. I can and imagine that it's you a, have a, resource, a, a lifelong endeavor. And this is a great resource for anyone who's just needs to have, what do I do now? I don't have my plastic bags. What do I do? I don't know what the alternatives are. Yeah, right, right. I'd, there, I'd love to know what you, what you personally have found kind of uh, either difficult or, or maybe easier than you expected going, you know, low plastic or plastic free you know as what? possible. It was so much easier than I ever thought hmm. it was going to be. You know, it took the point of frustration for me. I was carrying like jugs and jugs of water bottles. I lived in New York City and I thought, I'm not drinking the water out of the pipes. You know, they say New York City is the best water, but you know, every time I turn on my pipes, there would be right. rust York, coming right. out of the best water. <laughs> New York, New York City know? thinks they're the best at everything. Well, that's kind of true. Some pretty things good are, water too. Yeah, right. We have great water here, yeah. so, and there's no rust coming out of my pipes, but it forced me to buy water jugs um, and I didn't realize there was a problem with plastic at the time I just sure. did what everybody else did went yeah. to the store got my six bottles brought them home and every day I'd like I'd be finished with my bottles after a week and 
then I was like, I had to take these bottles to the, the recycling bin. And I started to get frustrated. I'm like carrying these jugs. I'm trying to put them in plastic bags. I just like, where, what, this, this has got to be something better than this. And where is all this stuff going? Again, is like, where is this going? Mm. So um, that started the investigation. And the minute I started investigating, all, you know, what does plastic do to your body? Where does the plastic get recycled? All their alternatives. Yeah. You know, it changed my life. It changed my life That's instantly. Amazing. So how many years? Um, so the my son's baby bottle, <laughs> and I want to say um, 13 years, solid okay. 13 to 14 That's years That's so now. awesome. That's impressive. Yeah. Man. And yeah. I love how this book, the look of it is I like, know, I know. Yeah, it's well, like, of course, it's done uh, all echo. Yes, right. Know? And actually, my husband and I, we, we're coming out with a book, too. Oh, um, it's a children's book. It's called Don't Eat the Plastic. Oh, um, I love All right. Well, I like it. I got a kid. And I need to get that another time, well, you're going to, it's great, actually. And my yeah. husband's an illustrator, so he illustrated it, and I wrote it. Terrific. And we're hoping it's going to come out in 2019. We have some people interested in it. Oh, so cool. And if cool. that's the case, I'd love to, ju I want to get out there to the schools. Yeah. Because, you know, we have the schools, and they put the little plastic. I was an art teacher for mm -hmm. 20 years. So. Where did you teach? I taught all over the valley okay. there, through an outreach out pro oh, okay. outreach art program. I was one year at Waitley Elementary yep. School as a full time art teacher, and then otherwise there what they called outreach art program. And I traveled Waitley, Conway, Sutherland, you name it. I brought Franklin art. Yeah, That's cool. Did you get to indoctrinate your kids yeah. at all of, of you know your you anti plastic ways? This this is a very tricky business. Like yeah. you can't. I mm -hmm. have a son at home. Yeah, and he wants to go to Starbucks. And so, you know, if you want to kind of raise little advocates right. and activists, then you can't really, I'm living it. So yeah. he sees it every day. Um, you don't want to be pushing something on yes. a young person because you want them to become an advocate right. on their own. On their choice. So he came home the other day and said, guess what, mom? And I was like, what? He goes, I bought a recyclable Starbucks cup. So when I go there, I bring my cup and they refill, give me the liquid I want in there. Right. And I thought, good for you, that's a great beginning because you know, for the for a while I was like, I don't really want you to go to Starbucks. But then I thought, this is not gonna work. Right. Yeah. This right. is now it works with teens. Right. And now he's really an advocate. He's puts on his Instagram and don't use the plastic, you know, and that was just from being, you know, role models at home. That's All great. Right. Such good it advice. Was a, it was, a, good it was advice. a transition. First of all, I started my husband I was coming in with his club soda bottles, and I was like, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't come in with bottles. I'm all educated now. Yeah, I know right. what we're doing. We just got to <sighs> stop. Yeah. So it, it's like that. And now it's great because now my friends are influenced. And that's my point. It takes one person to have a message when it comes to the activism and to get that message out there. And if you make a difference in one person, you you made a difference. Right. I mean, you made a difference. One person doesn't have. I mean, this. Right. I mean, I know some people have this in a week. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. This is a. This is this came in my life, and I didn't want it to. Yeah. This was like, you can't. You have to go out in the world. You can't be crazy. I mean, my my. I put straws in my bags, and they end up in my takeout food. I put the. It's like a Jacob you know, Marley kind of thing where you're like <laughs> Scrooge, and you have all these like plastic signs. And that's how I'm just like. These are the plastics you I've forged in life. Yeah. And I'll come and torch you at <laughs> yes. night, right? A plastic carol. Yeah. I mean, so the, the artwork comes really from me wanting to get the ma message out there without being blunt. Yeah. I mean, I know this is very blunt, but somehow when you're looking at art and you see color yep. Yep. and you're attracted to, you know, rhythms of color or... Uh, the way someone draws a style mm -hmm. and you know people don't even notice sometimes like in this image like this underneath here it's it's all garbage You're bags right. and you know and this big tasumi and you don't really notice the bags so I'm hoping that that doesn't really come through at first first I want them to be oh that looks color. attractive right. the colors yep. and then you're drawn in and then you go uh oh <laughs> you know and that opens <laughs> a conversation and that's what I'm hoping my art's yep. gonna do that's and that's pretty much in everything I draw I was trying to see if I brought you anything else um, what's interesting now with what I've been doing this over a period of time is people that are in this kind of thing is they're, they're finding me 
and they're like, "Can you come and talk? Right. Can you come here? I am with you guys. Yeah, right? you've been you went to my show. publishing and stuff. And, like yeah, that. in London, yeah. I've been published in Australia. I've been, you know, for because these communities are very strong about their anti-plastic. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing books and they they want to do interviews with artists and they want to show the work. Everybody, the the beautiful thing is everybody has a common mission. So right. you could be a musician, you could be a painter or a writer, and it's it's not even important. Right. Like right now. My artwork is it. It's not. It, I, I'm not. It's not important to me. The artist part. It's the message, message. part. Mm. I'm not stuck on. I gotta get people to see my paintings. I'm stuck on like. I hope they're gonna see what I'm trying to right. show them. So I'll have like students contact me. Like I had students contact me in California, and said, "I'm that that hit me. That image hit me. Can I use it? We're doing a green festival. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to show them that." And can I use your work? And I'll do a poster for them, no charge. That's cool. You know, I'll send stacks of my posters with an alternative list. I'll just put it out there as much as I can. So here is what was done with this original image that I showed you for Golden West College in Huntington, California. Oh, that's terrific. Earth so, Week. And yeah, Earth Week. They had an agenda for it. the week, and they asked for my art, and I said, great. There's nothing better than when you can combine words with your with pictures. That's great when other people can combine the right. words for me. I know it's terrific. Yeah. And I don't. It's yeah. exciting. You know, that makes yeah. it my job yeah. easier. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I had um, a few people drop through the show and they said, "Oh, there were no titles," and well, I wasn't I said even. That too. Oh, yeah. So, you know, um, I'm a little shy about showing my artwork. That's the truth. So I just kind of you, brought my. You are. I am. Oh. I'm, I'm kind of one of those shy artists, believe it or not. Like the mission has really helped me to, to show my artwork mm. actually, because I'm not one to, uh, not showy in that way. Right. So I'm not one to, I pro, I'm aggressive because I want to get the work out because again, the message is so important. Yeah. And that's what that is about. Awesome. You know? how, how do people find you? What, do you have a website or what's your? Uh... I have a blog, mm -hmm. so you can actually write to me if you want, and you can respond to my paintings, and that's why I always, what, that's what I really hope for, because what I do is, it's kind of more like an information I'll put down, you know, a resource you can go to once you look at one of my paintings, and I want people to know that they don't have to look at this and feel bad, they can do something. Mm. Right. You know, the right. point is, is you can really do something if you choose to have a conscious mind and if you want to make a difference. What's the website? Uh, how do people find it? Mother's Time um, dot blogspot dot com. Mother's Time dot blogspot. But you know what? Com. Really, cool. if you just put in Dara Herman Searline in Google, and you're going to. -E Z -E I N. <laughs> you got that. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Z I E R. Well, no, I no, no, no. It's not that I didn't yeah. believe you. I just. No it's, the, it's, the it's, 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 it's the German last name thing. It is. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, so just put my name in, and there all my articles will come up, and all my interviews, you know, across the way, and that's great. Shouldn't be a problem. Thank finding you so me. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I love me. the show too. Thank and you. With Pam, with uh, Pamela Costa, that yeah, was really and a I really nice enjoyed the interview. Great too, and um, the article. Pick up the advocate and check us out in the paper. <laughs> what you are there? Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com.